speak to Swaran Singh, a professor of international relations at the Jawaharlal Nehru University. A warm welcome to the programme. So this is a really interesting one because Canada is saying they have credible evidence. India is saying this is absurd. What's your view? Thank you. First of all, uh, according to whatever I know, I think the Canadian Prime Minister is talking about credible allegations and not credible evidence. Uh, and therefore, I think there's a slight distinction that we have here. And that is what India has been saying. And indeed, now most of Canadian allies are also saying the same thing, that Canada should ideally carry forward the investigation of whatever credible accusations or uh, credible allegations they have and produce evidence, uh, which is what Government of India is also asking. Uh, but before any evidence is produced or investigation is concluded, Canada chose to uh, sort of uh, dismiss one of India's uh, diplomats. And as we have seen in the history of international relations, it automatically led India as well, you know, dismissing one of the Canadian diplomats. But I think it's more concerning that indeed one more similar murder has happened, uh, I think, yesterday, in addition to the murder that we are debating of June 18 of Mr. Nijar. And both of these are known to be you know, very close and then strong activists for what they call uh, the Khalistan movement. So indeed, I think India is today saying that there is an increasing violence uh, which is closely connected with people who uh, run this movement called Khalistan movement, which is outlawed in India. And therefore, as an immediate measure, I think India is also temporarily choosing to stop uh, granting visas uh, so that the kind of anxiety and anger and violence which we are seeing rising in Canada, at least within this particular community, should not kind of uh, you know, spread itself in, uh, and come to India. And therefore, it's a temporary measure, I think, that India has chose that uh, the visas will be not allowed for a brief period of time. But I think uh, Canada is beginning to learn that how its own allies also apart from, you know, broadly saying we are concerned or all demanding that a credible evidence is what is required in this case, before any publicized uh, allegations of this kind should be made mm. on a country which is otherwise seen as a critical partner for Canada in Indo-Pacific region. The strategy that Canada issued last November described India as the critical partner for their Indo-Pacific strategy. And in that sense, if two countries take, take each other as, uh, you know, close, close partners, then so, um, this was not let's just maybe expected. break this down because there's lots to unpack there what you're saying. Just want to say, first of all, though, if Trudeau didn't have substantial evidence, why would he be going to all of this trouble and risk a huge fallout with India, potentially? Uh, I think that's very interesting because particularly when he does so in Parliament, soon after having had an opportunity of one-to-one -one conversation with India's Prime Minister, clearly makes uh, most people think that this has a clear indication of linkages with Trudeau's domestic politics. His compulsions of coalition government that is running in which you have a particular party, you know, uh, NDP, which is uh, uh, sort of uh, led primarily by, uh, you know, Sikh leaders and uh, have had certain sympathies towards uh, the movement. And of course, because of that, Trudeau also has shown repeatedly his sympathies to people and uh, activities that are seen, uh, you know, sort of challenging and threatening to India's sovereignty and security. People who are outlawed in India are kind of seen closely connected with the uh, NDP. And uh, President, Prime Minister Trudeau, you know, right from 2017 is seen attending some of these events uh, organized by these people who showcase some of these things, which are completely antithesis of what India stands for. And they sort of paint India in a very different light. And that kind of issue has been lingering for a long period of time, at least for five, seven years now. India has been repeatedly saying to Canada to, you know, put certain kind of norms or yardstick or certain restraint on how far the freedom of expression should be allowed to go. But one possibly can understand in terms of domestic politics compulsions, which is making uh, Prime Minister Trudeau do what he's doing. Okay, Soran Singh, indeed, thank you so very indeed, much indeed for your time today. We appreciate your analysis on the topic from the Jawaharlal Nehru University.